You got this visceral fat. Do you know your brain has already shrunk? It shrunk. You're 22. Visceral and subcutaneous fat. Let's look at this study. Subcutaneous abdominal fat predict volume loss at midlife in 10,000 people. This is the other metric that we assign, we researchers, and in evaluating the power of a study, the validity of the results based on power of the study, which is numbers of subjects studied over numbers uh, over the period of time. The more people studied over the longer period of time, the more valid the results because of this metric called power is, is higher. So it's a recent study uh, in aging disease back just out in 2024. They looked at two fat depots, subcutaneous fat, and they also looked at visceral fat. All right, let's uh, take a look at the, the results a little more closely. MRI-based measurements of visceral fat, subcutaneous fat, 10,000 adults analysis showing both types of fat were linked with lower total gray and white brain volume um, changes and smaller regional volumes like hippocampus and the cortex. And it goes into the discussion how these fat depots may be mo modifiable factors for brain health. Both visceral fat and subcutaneous fat were linked to lower brain volume. Researchers scanned 10,000 people. They measured visceral fat, deep belly fat, around internal organs, and subcutaneous fat, fat just underneath the skin. Higher amounts of bow types, higher amounts of bow types um, of abdominal fat were associated with lower brain volumes, meaning less total gray and white matter. Gray matter, white matter are two principal types of, of uh, a brain tissue on an MRI scan, and which are key comparison uh, to, to, uh, this, uh, to brain tissue. Here's the study. There's the citation. Pull it, read it, learn about it for yourself, get motivated. All right, specific brain regions were affected. Study found strong correlations, relationships between fat levels and severe, uh, several cr critical brain areas, including total gray, gray matter, total white matter, hippocampus, the frontal cortex, where decision, uh, hippocampus is important for memory, frontal cortex important for decision-making planning. Are you become forgetful? Is your memory starting to decline? Get, a, get an MRI scan of your brain. Two things, MRI scan of your brain, looking at your hippocampus, and a donal MRI scan, uh, and see about visceral fat. And while you're there, get a look at your heart fat, see if you're gonna have a heart attack. You gotta be doing it. Why are you ignoring, ignoring this? It's like um, the rain coming in and you don't have a sump pump to detect it. It doesn't matter, you're sleeping peaceful at night. Meanwhile, your basement is flooding and you're gonna have you know $50,000 damage, like I had $40,000 damage to my house because I didn't get an MRI scan to detect that water coming in, my pump failed. Hey, Dr. Sean, I've been optimizing people for 15 years, making them the best version of themselves. And for the first time ever, I wanna make available my life's work, my passion, completely accessible to everyone, a completely free course that will help you no matter where you are in optimizing yourself. In this course, you'll not only learn the exact things that will restore you to your health, but what the medical establishment, importantly, doesn't want you to know about because they're incentivized to keep you sick. So click the link in the description below and get your completely free course, also available at growingbetternotolder.com. So temporal parietal and occipital lobes, various sensory and cognitive functions, also were part of it. So you can look look specifically at these regions where capabilities uh, reside, and you can see that impact in these changes. So all these areas showed negative correlations with abdominal fat levels, higher fat, lower volume, with very strong statistical significance. This is real. This is statistically significant. This you need to need to understand this correlation and how important it is. All right, um, let's look at visceral fat. In this study, had a strong effect across ages. They looked at age groups. 
They didn't look just at old people or young people. They looked at in a variety of age groups and it showed increased risk of reduced brain volumes with higher visceral fat. For example, individuals with the most visceral fat in, in the top quartile of the study, the ones that had the most, okay, uh, had significantly increased odds of low to total gray matter volume, i.e. they had smaller brains, their brains were shrinking dramatically. So even in young adults in their 20s, uh, excuse me, 22-year-old uh, uh, with a um, young age, you got this visceral fat. Do you know your brain has already shrunk? It shrunk. You're 22. You see the gravity of this? How many 22-year-olds do you think are getting these scans? How many of them are finding out that they brains are shrinking? It's not red. It's not being addressed. And certainly they're not addressing visceral fat. My God, if you're 60 or 70 and you haven't gotten scanned yet, do not delay. This needs to be done right away. This is incredibly important. Volume uh, uh, also, um, sorry, and women showed a greater impact than men. How about that? As if it wasn't bad enough that you got to wait long lines in bathrooms, you get more brain shrinkage women. My God, have you ever heard this? I didn't know this. It, it wasn't shared with me. It's, it's so important. Uh, if you're a woman today, uh, and that's why we're seeing a lot more aggressive dementia in women, because it just happens more because of this visceral fat. So women tended to have more pronounced reductions in their brain associated with elevated visceral fat compared with men. So the reason for this sex difference aren't yet clear, but it highlights that body fat uh, interacts with biology differently across sexes. So even more imperative um, if you're a woman that you get this and understand it. All right, let's talk about subcutaneous fat, okay? They were looking at visceral fat. Now they're addressing subcutaneous fat. While much attention often focuses on visceral fat, this study found that subcutaneous abdominal fat was also strongly linked to brain volume loss because subcutaneous fat makes up a larger percentage of total body fat. Its total association with brain volume can be considerable. So it's a big part of your fat in your body is your subcutaneous fat and they found this correlation, but it was a correlation. But I got very interested in this correlation. I think it needed to be teased out more and I'm gonna get into it. And some of you have already thought about that. And if you're still not tracking what I'm saying, don't worry, I'm gonna hit it so you can uh, understand with better clarity. So that doesn't prove causality because this is an observational data. So what's that mean is they just solved the observation. Brain shrinkage, lower visceral fat. To prove causation, you'd have to go into a model, somebody's normal, put in a bunch of visceral fat and see if it shrinks their brain. Who wants to volunteer for that study? That's unethical. That's not gonna happen. So do not wait. You, you cannot wait for, uh, well, I wanna see a causation model. It doesn't, it doesn't prove causation. You see these naysayers who want to wait for something that is never going to be ethically coming their way are missing out the opportunity to avoid this outcome just because this, the correlation is so strong right now. You want to get rid of this visceral fat. So abdominal fat could be, ben, you know, uh, reducing abdominal fat could be beneficial for cognitive aging and brain structure, especially in midlife. Right now, you got to find out and see what's going on. So how scientists think, uh, think it might work. What are the mechanisms? So uh, though this particular study doesn't track mechanisms, broader research suggests several pathways could link high abdominal fat to brain volume loss. Chronic inflammation from visceral fat, from the dumpster fire inside of you. Absolute dumpster fire. Visceral fat releases inflammatory molecules 
that can affect the brain. This is well documented. Insulin resistance, metabolic dysregulation, fat around the organs correlates with poor metabolic health, which is linked to brain aging, vascular health, blood, blood supply, perfusion, abdominal fat is tied to cardiovascular rich risk, which impacts blood flow to the brain. If you can't get blood to the brain, it's going to shrivel up like a raisin. And that's what's going on. Besides all of the pickling that's happening from the inflammatory molecules, tumor necrosis factor, the interleukins, resistant, all of the cytokines, dipokines that are getting released from the dumpster fire that's, that's spreading throughout your body. So summing it up in this study, 10,000 adults, whole body MRI scans, fat linked to brain volume loss, both visceral fat and subcutaneous fat, predicted lower brain volumes, gray matter, white matter, hippocampus, cortex, Regions were looked at. Even young adults showed elevated risk for decreasing their brain with visceral fat. Young adults in their 20s and 30s. And sex differences, women showed stronger associations in the analysis. Modifiable risk factors, abdominal fat may be targeted to support brain health. You know, Every what what's what's the discussion? What your doctors doing? They're 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 having you take you know statins. You know, trying to do that uh, instead of saying, hey, you know, how about we put out this dumpster fire? Nobody's talking about that. It's a shame. All right, so uh, weaker associations between uh, subcutaneous ad abdominal fat and brain volume loss were likely reflects biological heterogeneity within the subcutaneous compartment. So ding, ding, ding. They did not look at the different compartments making up subcutaneous fat. They lumped it together. This consistently happens time and time again in studies. They're not treating the, uh, the imperative of how different these two different types of compartments are superficial subcutaneous fat and deep subcutaneous fat. You know, best analogies like bricks and clouds difference. One causes disease, the other one protects you from disease. One helps you become more healthy, the other one causes you to become less healthy, more diseased. It's super important to, to make this distinction. So uh, superficial subcutaneous uh, adipose tissue uh, generally more metabolically protective, and deep subcutaneous fat um, is more inflammatory, visceral uh, fat-like in, in, in characteristics, and um, disease-associated. All right, let's review the differences in these compartments. All right, you guys should know visceral fat. We're at the belly button here. These are the muscles. Muscles are thin, they're filled with fat because of all this white fat. So the fat on the outside is the subcutaneous fat, and fat on the inside is the visceral fat or muscle fat, and the fat within the muscles of the back. Now, let's look at the subcutaneous compartment for differentiation. Now, evident to me when I step back is, the characteristic of this compartment looks different than this one. This looks more white, this looks more um, heterogeneous, it's darker. And you've got this black line going through there, that scarpus membrane, and it's separating these two compartments and keeping them apart because they're very different. One causes disease, the other one protects you from disease. So the disease causing one is the deep subcutaneous fat, protective one is the superficial. But predominating here, relative to this here is the deep because of all the visceral fat inside. I see it thousands of times. The more visceral fat you have, the more you have fat in your muscle, fat around your heart, and fat within your deep subcutaneous space. So got to get that blazing in your memory to know that there is a big difference in the amount of subcutaneous fat. So what they did was they just tracked the two of these together. They never looked specifically at what, ha what would happen with brain volume if you just looked at this. Or if you just looked at this, what is the difference? 
they never did that analysis because they just don't appreciate, even the researchers don't appreciate the significance, um, you know, that their other colleagues have done showing the disease correlation here in other areas like heart attacks, strokes, cancer, autoimmune disorders, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's, uh, et cetera, and how beneficial this is. They never look at that. We do here. That's why we're talking about these things in Alpha Maker and why you need to do the ultimate story. Hey, everybody. I'm a physician, MD, and researcher specializing in health and performance optimization. I specialize and have the most experience in the world in eliminating deadly visceral fat hidden inside people's abdomens and around their heart, increasing the risk for heart attacks and strokes, and also inflammatory fat inside muscles. I work with U.S. senators, congressmen, governors, senior executives of major corporations, ambassadors, the most important people in the world, to get them to be the best biological version of themselves possible, improving their appearance and improving their performance, helping them to become better influencers. Like this individual here, who is a senior member C-level of a major corporation who in three months went from looking like this to this by getting rid of his visceral fat. And this individual here, who is a senior executive who went from looking like this to looking like this in 11 months. This isn't weight loss, this is disease loss. If you wanna be the best version of yourself possible, come see me and work in my medical practice by going to drseanomara.com or click the link below and maybe I will work with you.